Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. We have our starting points, single filer, Mr. Anderson, 90210, Beverly Hills living in. And we're going to say that they have just the rental property so we can focus just on the impact of the rental property coming from the Schedule E, which is formatted in essence as an income statement. For the purposes of this problem, we're going to say it's 100% rental property it's not vacation property we're not personally using it or living in it so that we can just focus on depreciation here we've got starting point 120,000 of income 20,000 of expenses to give us that 100,000 net income which is flowing into schedule one which is flowing into the first page of the form 1040 standard deduction 12,950 87,050 taxable income all right, back to the Schedule E, we're focused on the depreciation. Now, when we think about depreciation, the first thing probably that comes to mind is the building itself. That's going to have the biggest impact typically uh, for depreciation in a rental property situation. And, and we have to think about that primarily when we first purchase the building or put it into place, because that's when we have to figure out what the basis is and so on. Uh, and pick the, pre the proper method. And then of course the software might help us out from that point forward once we properly put it on the books. And then there could be other depreciation for improvements and things like that, which we have to be careful from a bookkeeping standpoint to make sure that we pick out those items that need to be improvements as opposed to repairs. We might scan the repairs line item here to see if there are any like big items in there that look like they possibly should be categorized as improvements instead of uh, the repairs all right so let's first think about the property itself so remember when we get the property there's a couple ways that that might happen we might just purchase the rental property in which case it's the most straightforward type of situation because the purchase price adjusted for anything we needed to get it in place for service increasing by those items is is basically the cost or basis but we could inherit the property, in which case we've got to think about, okay, what's going to be the cost? Is it the fair market value or, or at the time of inheritance or, or the decease of the, of the, or we could get a gift of the property, which again gets kind of messy because then the, the basis, you know, it's kind of linked to the basis of the prior owner or something like that. Did we convert the property from uh, our personal use to rental use? In which case you would think, okay, does it need to be fair market value? or the cost and if the fair market value is higher than the cost you would think that it would have to be remaining the cost when it was personal property otherwise you would have that step up uh, in basis uh, kind of situation and then you have the issue of breaking out between between the building and the the uh the land so let's think about that concept real quick let's say we purchase something uh we purchase for purchase the building for 200,000 building and land the property and then we need to break it out between between land and building and the question is well how do we do that because I'm going to pull this down we just paid 200,000 for it so one one way you might do it is to take a look at the prior tax assessment right the prior tax assessment for property taxes assessment and let's say the prior time when they assessed it the total amount was uh, 160,000 160,000 for the total and they broke out between land and building on the tax assessment assessment uh, 136,000 for let's say this is let's go house and then land and then the land was 24,000 for a total total of the 160 so we can use basically those percentages we can't use those same numbers because obviously it was at 160,000 but we can use like a ratio and I could say okay let's take this divided by this 
make that a percent and that's 15 percent versus this divided by this make that a percent 85 percent if i sum that up it's a hundred percent so that would be a common way that we might deal with this problem and say okay i'm just going to do the same thing here 200,000 times the 85 percent and then i'm going to take the 200,000 times the 15 percent breaking out the current cost that i paid for it 170 30 uh, house to land this is the depreciable component this is the non-depreciable component so let's use that and then populate this into our depreciation schedule so different softwares are, will look different but but this the concept will be the same you've got your depreciation schedules and i'm going to say that that we've got the house and i probably should put the address but i'm just going to put you want to be as descriptive as possible but i'm just going to go generic here and just say the house or the building is going to go to the schedule e and the category is going to be the category is going to be a building date placed in service let's say it was placed in service on 02 uh 02 03 uh 22. so we're going to be using the method that we're going to be using because it's a building will be a mid-month convention so it'll assume it was purchased in the middle of february the cost i'm going to say and remember when we calculate the cost to get to that 200,000, we've got to take into consider whether you know the stuff that was was necessary in order to make the purchase happened including all the costs to go through escrow and stuff might be included in the purchase price as opposed to being expensed uh, at that point in time but we're going to say 130 170,000 170,000 we're not we don't have any 179 for it. it's going to be the property is going to be 27.5 years straight line residential rental building and so there we have it and then the other is just land so i can put on the books even though it's not going to depreciate schedule e category will be now land and o two o three two two and that's for the what did we say uh 30 000, 30 000 to get to the two hundred thousand. it's useful to put both those on the books even though the land is not going to be depreciated and we don't have a balance sheet on our books so why do we need it because it's useful to tie into of course the purchase price so in the future when we sell or something like that we can see what happened the building versus the land can tie into the you know the purchase price there's not going to be any depreciation on the land so land no depreciation and let's see the result so that pulls into our schedule e we see the populated here if I go into the depreciate, we don't have a balance sheet, but we'll typically have these depreciation schedules to help us to kind of see what is happening. So now we've got the building versus the land. And if we kind of analyze this, we say, okay, it's a house. The date was acquired here. This is the depreciable 170,000 is the depreciable component. And we're using SL straight line mid month MM 27.5, the life, the years it's going to depreciate over. And then the rate, from the tables using the table method is point is that rate to give us the five uh, four oh nine in other words if i took the 170,000 times the 0.03182 there we have it now let's actually try to calculate it using a straight line mid-month convention to get a better understanding of what is happening so it's a straight line method so the start is pretty straightforward 170 thousand divided by the number of years 27.5 that would be the amount if it was for an entire year but it wasn't we bought it in the middle uh, or in the beginning of february but it's a mid-month convention so we assume that we bought it you know at the middle of february so if there's 12 months in the year we've got 12 months minus like a month and a half so 12 months like 10 and a half months right because because we we only had it for a month and a half so we're going to say let's say divided by 12 and that would be the amount per month times 10 and a half months times 10.5 and that gets us about the same number so that's what's happening 